What's up gamers? I'm Coach and this is my Hardcore Iron Man. The end goal of this account is to try and survive to the front page of the Hardcore Iron Man achievement high scores. Making things more interesting, these high scores are bugged. Dead hardcores are given a random rune score, so if we ever lose our hardcore status, we lose our place on the high scores. To make it to the front page, we're going to have to take on nearly every achievement in the game, including some absolutely insane combat achievements. So, to get the hardcore ready to take on anything and everything, our first priority on the account will be completing all the quests, mini quests, and area tasks in the game. This should give us access to everything we need to take on the real challenges later, and will encourage me to get a solid base of skills along the way. Last episode we took out all the Pathfinder and Adventurer tier quests, and pushed for 99 magic so we could start our PVM adventures. In this episode we have three main goals. Wrap up the smaller quest lines and standalone quests. Complete the City of Centiston quest line to unlock Animate Dead and fully upgrade the Pontifex ring so I can PVM a bit more safely. And train Archaeology to see if I can unlock some of the juicy relics, like Persistent Rage, which makes you gain adrenaline out of combat. We will, of course, be keeping up with the Reaper Task a day, so I'll keep you posted if we get anything from those. <laughs> like this Lang artifact from the Archglacor Reaper here. <laughs> I started things out by AFKing a little bit of archaeology. I've been working on collecting artifacts for the Green Gobbo goodies collection so I can get Tetra compasses for the dream of a Tony's Matic one day. I should have enough artifacts here to put me past the 250 restored for the associate qualification. So I got us to level 81 archaeology as well. So uh, I'm going to go talk to this guy here about getting a bit of a promotion. And that is the associate qualification unlocked. Now there's just a few things I need to grab from the shop. I'm going to get the auto screener blueprint so I can ditch my saw box and get the material storage upgrade just so I can make sure I don't have to store any mats in my bank. It's probably more efficient to unlock the matic precision but mm, we'll get there soon enough. First kill of our QBD reaper today and we get a royal frame. Oh it's a unique, it's a new one. Heck yeah. Makes two pieces of the royal crossbow collected. No shot. We just got a royal sight as well. And just like that, we're three out of four for our royal crossbow. This is quite a nice little reaper task. Last kill of the reaper. What do we get? Another special. That's all right. Two drops that reaper. We take. We take. I got a wee invite to do a cheeky little beastmaster run here. Oh, what do we get? That looks like a reroll to me. Oh! just got our first piece of Acto! Let's go! We just got 83 wood cutting off an evil tree and uh, I realised I can stew boost up to gather the mats to repair my Sanus fire torch. Oh man, this thing is going to be great for Grossus. It's that time of the week where we hand in our penguin points for some Herblore XP. And there we go. There is level 99 herb law. Let's go. Time to go get the cape, I reckon. Where do we get herb cape from again? Let's buy our herb law cape. Oh, that's cute. Heck yeah. So AFKing Archaeology has been great for training our invention level uh, and we're now high enough level to make the auto alka which means that we no longer need to manually alka things we can just fill it up and forget and come back when the stuff has been turned into GP. I've also been chipping away very slowly at the dwarven and goblin tech trees just doing daily easy daily tasks like uh, this one here which has allowed me to unlock a couple of little things like mech chins and I think now also we can unlock our old act coil which would be pretty cute. Making those chin jumpers here will make an absolutely fantastic way to train ranged. They are a level 75 version of the old chin jumpers so they hit mobs in a 3x3 which means they're just absolutely spectacular spectacular for taking out groups of monsters in places like ED3 for example. Um, I'll need to get some more plated parts to whip up a few more but uh, but mechgens they're fantastic. 
And we can also make the old Ack Coil here, which acts like the Dwarven Multi Cannon, but it's a magic based weapon instead of ranged, and it has a slightly shorter range. So it's quite handy for places where you don't want to be firing cannonballs way off into the distance. It can be pretty handy for saving a few. So that's a couple of a couple of very handy little upgrades there. A couple of very handy little upgrades indeed. We've managed to save up enough chronotes here, handing in our collections, to be able to purchase the full archaeologist outfit and the Matic Precision upgrade, which is very handy. The outfit's going to give us a plus 6% XP boost while we train the skill. The Matic Precision upgrade here is going to make just gathering materials and artifacts that little bit quicker. And now we look like a real archaeologist! So I got another Araxor Reaper. I'm not super keen to be here before getting animated dead unlock, but it's only four kills, so it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, oh my lordy, that's uh that's a spider leg piece. Second kill on the Reaper. That is uh <laughs> that's kind of awesome. Well, that was a Reaper's ask and a half. Spider leg bottom on our fifth Araxor kill. I don't think I'll be working on finishing a weapon anytime soon, but that is very nice to have. Oh, guys, oh, guys, I did it, boo-boo. Last episode, we wrapped up all the Pathfinder and Adventurer quests, but I didn't realize I had my quest list filtering mini quests. So, uh, let's get at it. Starting out with Sheep Shearer. Shear sheep, spin wool, done. 150 crafting XP, 2k GP. Then we helped the witch brew a potion and witch's potion, plus 325 magic XP. And then it was off to the barbarian outpost for the bar crawl. Unlike the last two mini quests, this one is an important one to get done, as it's an early requirement for a lot of endgame quests. It's a nice and easy one too. Just go to each of the listed pubs and have one drink. Bar crawl complete and access to the barbarian agility course unlocked. The mini quest rampage continues with purple cat and rogue trader, both of which were rather short and uneventful. Sins of the Father unlocks Effigy Incubator on Anachronia, which gives us effigies as a reward, which are basically like urns, but way better. This D&D also has some time-gated achievements, so it's definitely going on our monthly list. The last of the Stray series list mini quests to take on was Total Combat, where you build a dojo for some teenage mutant turtles to train their ninja skills down in the Varrock sewers. <laughs> Great mini quest. Great mini quest. And with all the standalone mini quests knocked out, I felt like it was time to take on the last few standalone actual quests, knocking out Scorpion Catcher, Olaf's Quest, and Rat Catchers. We love Rat Catchers. No! No! You can't stop it! Stop! Ah, no, God damn it! Easy game, bro. No! It was all going fine, and then we got to rat catches. I needed to calm down a little bit after rat catches, so I put my weapons in the bank and went to Entrana to do an enlightened journey. After the quest, I made sure to fly to each of the destinations from Entrana to unlock them for later use. This completed the Round the World in Six Ways achievement for 15 rune score. After that, there was just three loose end quests left. Meeting History, which wraps up the Enchanted Key series. Type of one I trio, which allows you to learn barbarian smithing. Useful for later when we do the Fremenic achievements. And finally, My Arm's Big Adventure. Unlocking a brand new disease-free herb patch in Trollheim. Uh, it's the next day, and these dailies just got a 70 runecrafting and 70 plus in all stats. Apart from necromancy, because this footage is from a while ago. And that's a berserker ring from Antagonist King Reaper. Number six so far. <laughs> With all the standalone quests completed, I wanted to wrap up a few storylines that I'd started, but not completed. Starting out with the Elemental Workshop 3 and 4. The puzzles. So many puzzles. Then it was on to the Gnome Quests with the Path of Glofrey, which got us 85 Slayer, and then the Prisoner of Glofrey, which had an even larger XP reward, but didn't get us any levels. The last of the half-finished minor quest lines to wrap up is the Temple Knight series with Slug Menace, Kenneth's Concerns, and Salt and Wound. Not a huge fan of these quests, so just kind of get gonna get them done and move on. Oh man, I needed a bit of a break from questing. So I've gone to do some archaeology down at the War Forge, and it's taken a while. I think I've been quite unlucky, actually. But I finally got awful pieces of the Imkando Matic. But to make it, I need to be able to get into this forge. And 
Well, that's going to take finding 12 keys. The first two I've already found digging. Let's go hunt down the others. That should be all of them now. And in we go. Cool. Now I just need to go talk to Thurgo in Port Sarum and learn how to put this thing together for the small price of a red berry cry and one million gold pieces. We've learned how to smith an encandomatic. Oh, there it is. Feels good. We're just going to augment it up and we're going to chuck on honed three. I'll improve the perks when I get ancient invention and prosper because we love clues. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to chill. I have okay, some more archaeology, I guess, and uh, just do a, one more update at the end of the episode. Okay, so this is our third Chinchompa from Adam here. I think my other two are females. If this is a male, we are going to be balling. Can we pull a male Chinchompa? The moment of truth. Nope. In the background, I have been running some agility labs when the roar of Osseus effect is active. I'm only 82 agility at the moment, so I've been using the plus 5 boost from the God Banner for 30 minutes to run full laps for half the hour. The main reason I've been doing this is these codex pages here. And as you can see, after yesterday's run, I have 488 gathered. I actually couldn't be bothered waiting for another roar today, so I just used my banner boost straight away to run a lap without the buff, and I got my last few pages. Here it is, we are crafting double surge. This is going to be so handy. Oh, yeah. We can move now. Now that we've got all the little miscellaneous quests and series out of the way, we can start to quest with a purpose. The first major questing task being the city of Centiston to unlock the anime Dead Spell, which heavily reduces incoming damage when wearing magic tank armor. A no-brainer combo with our Crypt Bloom. Before we can complete City of Centiston, we're going to have to knock out a few of the prerequisite quests. Desperate Creatures, Rapture the Shadow Colossus, The Vault of Shadows, As an Address Quest, and finally, Battle of the Monolith. Then we can take on the City of Centiston. We're starting off at the beginning with Desperate Creatures here, which has us collecting various flora and fauna samples from around Anachronia, and getting a little bit of eavesdropping in as well. Rapture the Shadow Colossus took us all of about two minutes. Siphon Anima, watch cutscene, done. Vault of Shadows was a good bit of fun. It had some good puzzles, and I love puzzles. I did get caught out when I needed some archaeology artifacts though, and I ended up spending about an hour digging in the middle of the quest. But we got there in the end. With the setup quests out of the way, it was time to get stuck into the real goods with as a Nadra's quest. This quest had us hunting down the Elder God eggs in the hopes of finding them before they hatch and really bad things happen. This rewards us with the ability to upgrade the Pontifex Signet Ring into the Pontifex Observation Ring, which isn't super exciting of itself, but the ring can be upgraded more later, which is exciting. This was followed up with the Battle of the Monolith, which has an interesting auto battle mechanic. I kind of just ignored it and fletched for most of the quest. After 45 minutes of AFK fletching, I was awarded with the Shard of Erebus, which goes in the pocket slot and stops the God Wars 3 mobs from becoming aggressive. Then it was finally time to take on the city of Centiston. We unearthed an ancient underground city, a perfect place to hide the Elder God eggs. We collected four ancient crystals from around the city to repair the defenses, and with that, the city of Centiston was ready for God Wars 3. Quest complete, and Animate Dead unlocked. Absolutely massive for a hardcore. This also allows us to upgrade the Pontifex Observation Ring to the Pontifex Shadow Ring, which has some wicked buffs if charged with the Resonant Anima from God Wars 3. Completing City of Centiston also took us to 300 quest points, so it's time to pay May a visit and claim our quest die. 1 million GP and room plate legs 81. Not too shabby. I feel like celebrating 300 quest points in style though. I have stacked up 75 very wieldy reward bags. I really wanted to stack 100, but there was a bug in game that prevented banking the bags while I was recording this episode, so I kind of had to make do. We have Annihilation and Obliteration already, so I just need Decimation with these so I have a tier 87 range weapon, and I would not complain about a core.
The Alps and Brawlers from these reward bags are just too good. I had just about given up on getting any uniques when uh, when this happened. The final 15. Woo! Chat, do we think that that might be better than a decimation? <laughs> so we legit just got a Dark Onyx core. Oh my lord. The last 14 caskets went uneventfully. All in all, we got about 2.2 mil cash, 11.8 million GP worth of Alks, and a little over 5,000 magic logs, 2.3 thousand for criminal bolts, and a Dark Onyx core. I won't be able to use the core for a long time, but I am certainly happy with it. Oh my god, I literally just came for a little bit of GP and I picked up the scripture of when. What the footage is this? My god. Holy, let's chuck this thing on. Dooch. No shot. We just got a second scripture. This hour, dude, what the f is my RNG? Wow. That was a good little money making hour indeed. Not only did we get enough Alex to sustain dailies like broads, but we sneaked two scriptures of win. So now I have a pocket slot that will contribute to damage output. Before I can wear it though, I think I need to get 99 defense for the cape perk, so I don't need to wear a sign of life. Okay, that is a little bit more work still to be done. After finishing the city's center stem, we can use a dragon stone to upgrade our Pontifex observation ring to the Pontifex shadow ring, which allows us to collect troves in God Wars 3 for some nice loot. We can upgrade the ring a little bit further though. Charging the ring with 1,000 Resonant Anima of Bic reduces the stat drain in the Crosis Arena by 25% when worn. Adding 1,000 Resonant Anima of Wen makes Protection Prayers 10% more effective when fighting the Arch Glacier. And charging with 1,000 Resonant Anima of Jazz prevents us from taking a stun when Karapak uses his Slam mechanic. This brings the ring to tier 5 because it starts at tier 2. I don't know why, but, uh, but anyways. This means when we collect troves from any of the Elder Gold Wars, we will be collecting the tier 3 three troves but we are still not quite done upgrading this ring it also needs to be charged with resonant anima of fall from the zuck arena fortunately the best strategy for collecting this is actually just repeatedly killing the mobs in wave four which is very relaxed you just kill them all pop the special and don't attack zuck letting the wave restart it took all of about 30 minutes to collect 1500 resonant and anima, so I charged the ring with 1000, which provides a 25% damage reduction to damage received from the geysers in Zuck's Arena, and upgrades the ring to tier 6, meaning now we can get Pernix Quiver Fragments from the tier 3 troves we open. Oh, and I got 92 defense along the way. There is one final tier of upgrade for the Pontifex Shadow Ring. Tier 7 which allows all the benefits of the ring to work even when the ring is in the bank. This upgrade is not like the others though, where tiers 3 to 6 take just 1000 anima of a single type, upgrading to tier 7 takes 5000 anima of each type, making for a total of 20,000 resonant anima. Conveniently, my crosses and arch glacier adventures on the account to make cash have left me sort of two of the anima types, but it's going to have to be back to Karapak for that 5000 anima and another round of wave 4 zuck farming. Update! We got 2000 Jazz Anima before doing some Wave 4 Zuck farming for another 2500 full Anima, but I have a huge problem. I have totally run out of overloads and I don't have any Ranwall spikes to make extreme ranging potions. So for right now, I'm stuck. Now at this point, I could have done what any sane person would do and go hunt a few Granwalls, but that's no fun. So I decided to do big game hunter until 99 hunter instead here we go 85 hunter oh let's go i'll take 86 hunter and a baby corbicula rex it's not grandwall oh and grandwall spikes there's 87 hunter incoming gamers there we go ladies and gentlemen magrata rex egg oh, for i forgot my brawlers again 
But we got 90 Hunter. Right, there's actually quite a few unlocks. Let's upgrade our Hunter Lodge right now to tier 3. We don't have to deal with as many stupid frogs. Oh, we got Lassie of Tom's egg. Let's go. And level 91 Hunter coming in. Oh, feels good. Just eight levels to go. Oh, sheesh. We just got a medic as well. It's not back to back, but it's pretty close. There's another medic. Two kills later. And 92 Hunter. Hey, we'll take 87 Slayer. Sometimes I forget that BGH trains Slayer as well. And then I remember. Randall's? Hello? No, but we did get 94 Hunter. Oh, no shot. We just got a Malatops egg. All right, here we go. Level 95 Hunter. Nice. And there's 96 Hunter coming in. I don't need to boost for any of the dinos anymore. Oh, 88 Slayer. You gotta love that. Oh, hello. 97 Hunter. The stream doesn't end until 99 Hunter confirmed. Level 98 Hunter. Heck yeah. No shot. We just got a freaking spaghetti egg. Excuse me? What did I get, bro? I got a dragon manic and a superior long prone in the same kill. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. 99 Hunter. I think Maul is going to be a challenge for a much later day. And so I headed off to Ooglog to buy a Hunter Cape. I do like this cape. The emote just brings back so many memories. <laughs>now that we're finally done with 99 hunter if we're going to show you the the loot here we've got four spearmatics and a fair few baby dinos as well these will be great for when we get the farming level for the dino farm over on anacronia and we managed to pull over a thousand grand wall spikes now i've used a couple to make some overloads already so i actually got a few more than that but there's the real creme de la creme the, the superior long bone there the first piece of our pterosaur mall so one day we'll be heading back to Big Game Hunter to finish that off, but I think that'll be a down the road thing. Now the 99 Hunter grind took a few streams, and I got up to a few bits and bobs in between hunting sessions, including a couple of Beastmaster runs where I snagged these Acto Tempest boots and my third Mascab ability codex, which I used to unlock Storm Shards and Shatter. Useful for a bit more group PVM later on. Also got 84 Fletching waiting for an Infernal Star, and got my fifth Annihilation. If only it was the ranged weapon. Oh, and uh, this happened. Oh, sad. We didn't get anything, but we did get a synchronized wave. That was fun. This is Pingu. He shows up at some of the events. He's a bit of a, bit of a laugh. He plays Iron Meme as well, and we just bump into him all the time. And he just happened to be here while we opened our booty bags, which had nothing interesting. But, uh, hey, Pingu. I'll see you around on 257. Strap in, because there's more. I got 95 from a daily dino farm check. Hit 25,000 marks of all so I could unlock the Berserker Aura and got level 101 Herb Law from a Jack of Trades run. Reaper tasks weren't forgotten and I managed to pick up my seventh Berserker ring from a Dagonoth King's task, followed closely after by my second Dragon Hatchet. A pleasant surprise considering the first took over 500 kills. A gold statue run got me 81 construction and to keep things interesting I spent the occasional raw hour doing agility. And I managed to push to 87, collecting enough codex pages to unlock double escape along the way. And of course, ever since we made the tier 6 Shadow Pontifex ring, I have been popping through to the Croesus front whenever I remember to grab a cheeky tier 3 trove from the Hunter nodes. So far I've managed to sack up 78 of these, which is pretty tasty. I'll be opening these later on when I am in need of some cash. Okay, back to the main job. We got our Grenwell Spikes, and we were about to make overloads so we can go back to God Wars 3. No shot! Oh, 
I was just whipping up those overloads and uh, we just got Herbert, the Herblaw pet. Dude, that's so cute. Wow, let's get the little fella out, shall we? Ha <laughs> that's well cute. Oh, I love it. One more pet on the collection. So, not too much later, and we've got our overloads made. I managed to get out 62. Interestingly, the bottleneck now is actually tour stalls. But I have a bit of a plan for those. As you can see, we've still got a fair few extremes made up. So once I get some tour stalls, I'll actually be able to make a couple hundred more overloads. So we should be good for a minute. With overloads in the bank, it was straight back to Karapak for that anima so I could make the final upgrade to the Shadow Bond Effects ring. Just as I was nearing a 5,000 anima mark, I hit the absolute jackpot. The greater weapon, the star. <laughs> we popped off to Wars to cast regular concentrated blast one last time on the dummies before unlocking the greater version, which is just one of the best magic abilities. I'm so glad we got that. With g -Kong unlocked and the Jazz Ammo banked, it was time to get back to Wave 4 farming in the Zuck Arena. It didn't take long at all, and the rest of the loot from that little grind was pretty bloody tasty as well. Finally, it is time to take this ring to where he's at all in Centerston and overcharge it. This means we're now getting all the buffs from the ring without the need to even take it out of the bank. That ended up being a bit more of a mission than initially anticipated, but we made it. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video. Wait, what was that? I promised an update on archaeology as well? Ah, oh, I thought I'd finish this. Okay. So I upgraded my cosmic focus to a cosmic accumulator at 90 archaeology, granting better sprite focus and thus faster gathering. Fully mastered the Ascentus and Digsite by completing all research and mysteries, and I obtained the Professor qualification, unlocking the material storage and manic precision upgrades. I made a big push to collect Red Rum Relic collections to hand in for Tetris Compass purposes later on. Collecting 33 of these sets brought me up to 96 archaeology. I only managed to squeeze in a little bit more after that, pushing up to level 97, but I was able to collect a few relics along the way, which is what we were actually after. Fury of the Small is quite possibly one of the best PVM relics you can have, granting an extra 1% adrenaline on every basic ability. Sticky Fingers increases the rate of auto pickpocketing by 50%. This one is going to come in handy big time later on. Death Ward gives damage reduction when life points are low, useful as a hardcore. Pharmacology prevents herbs and mushrooms from becoming diseased, and I probably won't use this one. And lastly, Endurance, which gives infinite run energy. Another one that I will likely not be using. For the time being, I think I'm going to run Fury of the Small for the extra adrenaline, Shadow's Grace for the extra mobility, and Death Ward for the extra safety. Oh, and I got 96 farming from an evil tree. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!